gentlemen, these vehicles represent 1950s technology, and therefore you may be in for a culture shock. These are Green Goddess firefighting appliances. <clears throat> Built in the 1950s, they are still more than capable of fighting fires efficiently. With its high efficiency pumping capabilities, well-maintained equipment and simplicity of operation. As you can see, the appliance is very basic with simple rugby controls. But it is more than capable of carrying a crew of six in full gear at a reasonable speed to any fire or incident. The Bedford engine is a six-cylinder, five-litre petrol-driven unit coupled to a simple four-speed gearbox. The vehicle can also operate over rough terrain and has four-wheel drive capability. You should find that lever one is right back in the road normal position. And lever two should be right forward in the pump out position. You are then ready to drive the vehicle in normal rear wheel drive. For cross country four wheel drive capability, first select the gear required. This time ensuring that this gear is moved fully forward to the four wheel drive, giving four wheel drive low ratio. Okay. After completing your normal daily tasks, there are two further items that require your consideration. One is the fluid level in the brake master cylinder behind the driver under the floor. And two, the battery electrolyte level, which is located under the crew seat on the left hand side of the vehicle. You will notice it is a positive earth fitting. To start the vehicle, it is very simple. Turn the ignition on, choke out. Ensure the gearbox is in neutral and depress the starter button. To engage the pump, lever one in the pump position, lever two in the pump in position, and engage fourth gear on the gearbox. All right, having engaged uh, pump drive in the cab, we're now at the back of the vehicle. Um, what we're going to do here is to draw a vacuum, which is a means of testing the pump before uh, it's actually pumping water. Right. Um, it's actually in pump drive, we've been in the cab, we put it in pump drive. What we're going to do now is, this is a hand throttle, we depress the hand throttle. We're looking at a minimum of 1,000 and a maximum of 1,500 RPM. And I repeat, that is a maximum, you don't want any more than 1,500 RPM. About 1,000, there shouldn't be any problems there. Um, having got approximately 1,000 RPM, we're now going to prime it. By means of pulling this handle, we are now priming the vehicle, we're priming the pump. The, the vacuum gauge should read a minimum of 25. You'll probably find you get 26, 27. When you've got it up there and it won't go anymore, simply let that go. Um, providing it does not drop more than 15 within a minute, then the pump will pump efficiently. There should be no problems. As soon as you let this go, lift the hand throttle back up, the revs will now be on a minimum and you can count the time. If the pump will not hold that vacuum, a minimum of 24 for at least one minute, then there is a problem. To solve this problem, we go around and check all valves and taps. Coventry Carmax featherweight pump has carried a number one locker. Um, we'll pump 300 gallons per minute. We'll also feed uh, the Green Goddess with water from any source. Use it's the same kind of source as the Green Goddess, lakes, rivers, whatever.
when this has been taken from the fire appliance, the first thing to do is make sure the petrol tap is on, then come round to the lift pump, prime it till the petrol has filled the carb. And come to the front of the pump, make sure the throttle is in the off position, which is up, and the choke is fully out. And hopefully, three or four swings, and it should start. previously started the pump, what we need now to do is to check the two delivery valves and the suction inlet valve to make sure they're all closed. Depress the priming lever which will close the poppet valve here. Depress the hand throttle. We will then find that we will get a minimum of 24 inches of mercury on the vacuum gauge. At this stage, release the priming handle and the hand throttle and you will find that it will drop very little, if at all, within the minute. If you have trouble starting the CCF, usually the problem is because it's flooded. Um, you'll see, you'll know if it's flooded because there will be traces of petrol at the base of the carb and the inlet manifold, i.e. here, as is shown here. Very simple to cure this. Make sure the choke is off. The hand throttle is up. Then move to the front of the vehicle. Turn it over probably six, seven, eight, nine times. Come back to the hand throttle, slightly depress the hand throttle, and you'll find then that within, hopefully, within a few turns, it will kick up. Lockers 1 to 5 are on the near side of the vehicle, 6 to 10 are on the off side. Locker number 1, light portable pump. Locker number 2, assorted nozzles and branch pipes. Locker number 3, hoses. Locker number 4, auto hoses. Locker number 5, ancillary equipment. Then we move to the off side of the vehicle. We now come to locker six. This locker includes sizal rope and tarpaulin. Locker number seven, hoses and a set of chimney rods. Locker number eight, um, toolkit and various other attachments. Locker number nine contains suction baskets, fuel and water containers and a full inventory of your stock. And locker number ten is the six inch four bore outlet. Our uh, suction pipes both for the fire appliance and the CCFW. These, uh, this is an axle for the cold climate for the right one to eight transportation. As you can see it's pretty basic. This is a, this is the uh, the ladders etc that are carried on the roof of the vehicle. Access can be gained to the first aid tank via the roof trap door. For a full list of equipment and all drill books, check the fact back in the cab main source of water will be from a hydrant such as this which will feed the fire engine. All this equipment is carried within the fire engine. Um, obviously before we can use the first aid uh, hoses on the vehicle we must ensure that the first aid tank is full. Uh, this is situated the middle top of uh, the vehicle. Um, it's a very simple operation. Um, You'll need a pipe attached to a standpipe. Um, you then attach the other end of the standpipe pipe to 
the foam cock. Um, if you then open the valve on the standpipe, you'll deliver water to here, then open this valve, which will then slowly but surely fill the first aid tank. During this short test drive, we will show how the vehicle will perform. We will show how it will roll. We will show that it can be sluggish going up the hill. We will also show how a lot of care and a lot of consideration has got to be taken when driving one of these, especially when it's got a lot of water in the back. It will have a full tank of water in the back. There's no power steering. It can be a very difficult vehicle to drive, especially when full of water. Great care must be taken driving this vehicle when it has a six-man crew and a full tank of water. You'll now see on the test route what I mean. We're now on a, a hill with an incline of 12%, which is not too spectacular. We're now doing approximately 10 mile an hour in second gear. We have a four-man crew and no water whatsoever. So you can imagine what it would be like if we had a six-man crew, all their associated equipment, which isn't on the vehicle at the moment, plus several thousand pounds in water on the back. It would be very, very slow going indeed. I could increase the revs. It makes not really too much difference to the speed. having difficulty transferring from four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, the procedure is as follows. Simply put the vehicle into reverse, travel backwards a short distance, and try it again. Uh, we hope the video has been informative. Um, if there are any facts and figures needed, you'll find them all in the fact pack in the vehicle cab. Uh, if not, if, there, if you've got any problems or any queries, phone or fax these numbers.